successfully accomplished the monumental feat of landing on the moon, engaging in a competitive effort to surpass Russia. Today, the moon plays a much larger role, acting as a hub connecting Earth to the wider solar system. Even SpaceX recognizes the strategic importance of establishing a permanent lunar outpost, as this crucial step is fundamental to its ultimate goal of colonizing Mars. Introducing Starship. Beyond just serving as a mode of transportation, Starship is poised to serve as a fundamental pillar of lunar colonization, eventually paving the way for deep space exploration and interplanetary travel. How SpaceX will realize this ambitious vision. Let's discuss more in today's episode of NR Studio. The lunar landing effort requires addressing a unique set of challenges caused by its inhospitable environment and lack of atmosphere, reminiscent of the complexities faced by a two-star restaurant located in a busy city center. Unlike Earth, where the presence of air facilitates aerodynamic braking, the moon's reduced gravitational force affects descent dynamics. In response to these challenges, SpaceX is developing a different variant of Starship called the Human Landing System, which is carefully designed for lunar missions. Given that the spacecraft is designed to serve as a lunar base rather than a return to Earth, the incorporation of a thermal protection system for re-entry into the atmosphere is unnecessary. By eliminating this feature, SpaceX significantly reduces the overall weight of the spacecraft, saving valuable fuel that would otherwise be expended on a controlled descent and repairs. Another important modification involves the integration of sturdy landing legs designed to ensure Starship's stability on the rugged and rocky lunar surface. Given that Starship significantly exceeds the altitude of traditional lunar landers, stability will undoubtedly be prioritized over structural integrity. Additionally, the HLS variant will feature engines mounted on the hull rather than the base, significantly minimizing the amount of lunar dust disturbed during landing an often underestimated but substantial risk associated with lunar landings. A key change concerns the spacecraft's thermal management system. Unlike the conventional stainless steel exterior of the standard Starship, the lunar variant will feature a white surface designed to effectively manage the temperature fluctuations characteristic of the lunar environment. This color change is critical for reflecting solar radiation, effectively ensuring a stable temperature for personnel and cargo. In addition to its role as a lander, this particular starship will operate as a lunar base. With its large cargo capacity, it is capable of transporting all the essential equipment needed to establish a sustainable presence on the moon in a single flight. After fulfilling its primary function as a transport ship, the tank section can be reconfigured into a habitable habitat for astronauts, eliminating the need for separate habitat modules, much like a space walker or a camping trailer designed for the final frontier. Please provide the text you would like me to repeat. Nevertheless, mere presence will be insufficient for the establishment and sustainability of a lunar base. The cornerstone of enduring sustainability is poised to be robotics. Although the image of astronauts traversing and laboring in low gravity is iconic, the truth is that the majority of the heavy lifting, construction, and resource extraction will be undertaken by machines. Despite their sophisticated design, spacesuits impose significant limitations on astronauts' mobility rendering numerous construction tasks impractical. Moreover, sustained contact with lunar regolith, recognized for its exceptionally abrasive properties, may deteriorate the integrity of spacesuit materials and undermine their protective functions. Of even greater concern is the absence of a lunar atmosphere, which subjects astronauts to perilous cosmic radiation. In summary, the extended duration of your stay in the lunar wilderness correlates directly with increased peril. Consequently, the utilization of robots and autonomous rovers transcends mere convenience. It is an absolute necessity. The establishment and functioning of a lunar base will necessitate nearly uninterrupted operations beyond the habitat, particularly involving the excavation of substantial quantities of lunar regolith for the purposes of infrastructure development and resource extraction. These tasks require physical attributes that significantly surpass human limitations in strength, endurance, stability, in operational longevity. Conversely, robots possess the capability to operate incessantly in harsh environments, eliminating the necessity for rest, which positions them as the quintessential labor force for lunar development. A critical aspect of design for lunar robotics is the optimization of power efficiency. In contrast to Earth, where robust construction machinery is predominantly powered by substantial internal combustion engines, lunar excavation necessitates a distinct methodology. 
Research indicates that for an initial lunar base capable of generating approximately 100 tons of liquid oxygen annually, the deployment of high-powered vehicles exceeding 10 horsepower may be superfluous. Rather than relying on high-speed heavy-duty machinery such as bulldozers and dump trucks, lunar operations will utilize robotic systems that perform slow, methodical movements coupled with refined excavation techniques to efficiently gather and transport regolith. This method effectively reduces dust disturbances while simultaneously enhancing energy conservation. Given the variability of solar power accessibility throughout the fortnight-long lunar night, the power systems designated for these machines must possess exceptional efficiency and adaptability. In the interim, we humans will direct our efforts towards undertaking tasks that necessitate decision-making, intricate problem-solving, and scientific inquiry. The foremost duties of our astronauts will encompass the assessment and validation of cutting-edge technologies, the diagnosis and rectification of complex machinery, and the advancement of the parameters governing robotic operations. They will also assume a pivotal role in scientific inquiries examining the lunar environment and the potential resources available for future utilization. In conclusion, the establishment of a successful lunar base will necessitate a synergistic collaboration between humans and machines, wherein each party leverages its unique strengths to advance the mission. Robots will undertake the majority of physical tasks, constructing infrastructure and managing resource processing, while astronauts will supervise operations, engage in research, and guarantee the optimal functioning of all systems. SpaceX's ambitious vision for establishing a permanent presence on the lunar surface, facilitated by Starship technology and advanced robotics, signifies a significant advancement in humanity's trajectory beyond Earth. In anticipation of this forthcoming monumental advancement, the innovation of specialized spacecraft, autonomous machinery, and optimized power systems will serve as pivotal elements in ushering in a new epoch of space exploration and habitation. Provided that we have completed all requisite preparations, it is now imperative to proceed with the establishment of a moon base. The selected site for the lunar base is positioned on the periphery of Shackleton Crater, specifically at coordinates 89.78 degrees south and 155.73 degrees west. This site is exemplary for a multitude of reasons. It benefits from abundant sunlight, guaranteeing a consistent energy supply. Its proximity to permanently shadowed areas renders it ideal for water extraction, and it features a flat, expansive terrain sufficiently large to accommodate a ship's safe landing and to maintain stability when horizontally oriented on the surface. Despite having a designated landing site, we shall not embark on a direct mission to the moon. Initially, we will deploy an unmanned starship loaded with critical equipment and resources to facilitate the establishment of the base and ensure the prolonged support of the subsequent crew. This methodical phase strategy enables us to establish a solid foundation proactively, thereby augmenting the safety of the crew. Should any complications emerge during the unmanned mission, the crewed mission may be deferred for additional evaluation. Should the initial phase progress without complications, the crewed spacecraft will subsequently touch down in a location strategically distanced from the original landing site to mitigate the impact of lunar dust on the pre-deployed apparatus. Upon arrival, the immediate priorities will include the unloading, deployment, connection, and activation of solar panels, power reactors, and radiators. Commencement of the transformation of Starship HLS into Moonbase Alpha will proceed promptly upon the successful completion of preliminary system checks and requisite documentation. The initial step entails positioning the HLS to rest in a horizontal orientation. One suggested approach involves the implementation of a cable system featuring a hinge situated at the base of the vehicle with cables strategically positioned at the midpoint complemented by a scissor lift that traverses the length of the vehicle, thereby offering essential structural support. The procedure I refer to as the lay me down gently process initiates with the folding of the lander leg in the specified tilting orientation. Certainly, please provide the text you'd like me to rephrase. The elevator system will systematically extend the cables, thereby augmenting the tilt angle. At a pivotal tilt angle, the tension in the cables redistributes the load to the scissor lift, enabling it to ascend along the vehicle structure as the tilting progresses. Upon arriving at the nose, the lift mechanism retracts, facilitating the vehicle's descent onto the pre-constructed berms or embankments. Once the vehicle is properly positioned, 
the methane will be completely extracted and securely stored in designated bladders. Residual fuel in the tanks will be vented to mitigate potential fire hazards during the interior modifications. In the payload compartment, nitrogen will be augmented with oxygen sourced from the tanks, whilst the oxygen reservoir will be refilled with nitrogen to establish an appropriate equilibrium of air and pressure. Transforming the fuel tanks of Starship HLS into habitable areas will markedly expand the livable space of the base, rendering it approximately two and a half times more spacious than the International Space Station. All internal walls shall be fortified with insulation and radiation shielding, thereby augmenting safety for the construction personnel. An additional two floors will be constructed, resulting in three distinct living levels, each with a height of approximately three meters. The interior will feature both private and communal living spaces, encompassing sleeping pods, kitchens, and a lounge area. Scientific research facilities will incorporate a laboratory dedicated to hydroponic plant cultivation, thereby guaranteeing a reliable supply of food for the crew. The concluding phase entails the implementation of communication, electrical, ventilation, and water distribution systems. In order to safeguard against radiation and the recurrent threat of meteorite collisions, the entire base will be enveloped in a protective stratum of lunar regolith measuring five meters in thickness. Indeed, we are in the process of constructing a lunar sandcastle, everyone. While this offers a safeguard against minor meteorites, the realm of space continues to pose inherent dangers. The conceptual renderings from SpaceX suggest aspirations that extend far beyond the establishment of merely a lunar base. They conceptualize a comprehensive lunar settlement, or colony, if you prefer. Consequently, the lunar configuration of the starship must possess scalability. Expansions can be realized by connecting supplementary horizontal starships through a specialized node located at the vehicle summit or via airlock corridors. The foremost challenge lies in the transportation of these additional starships to a singular location, as their proximity during landing is limited due to the interference of dust. A transport rover system could effectively address this challenge by evenly distributing the weight of the new starship during its relocation and docking processes. The Astrolab's Flex rover emerges as a highly promising contender for this endeavor. Engineered specifically for NASA's Artemis mission, the Flex rover exemplifies versatility, capable of accommodating two astronauts in their complete spacesuit gear. It is equipped with a robotic arm designed for sophisticated scientific research and facilitates robotic cargo logistics. With the ability to be operated remotely from Earth or controlled directly by astronauts on the lunar surface, the Flex rover is poised to play a critical role in future lunar exploration. It will launch aboard SpaceX Starship alongside a smaller prototype, FLIP, which is scheduled for a lunar mission later this year that aims to test critical systems such as batteries, tires, avionics, sensors, and software. I'm looking forward to the launch of this mission. I'm almost losing my cool. For sustainable lunar habitation, it's critical that we develop the ability to produce our own food and water resources. Japan is leading the way in this area. Last month, SpaceX launched two lunar landers into orbit, one of which was from Japan. The lander was equipped with an avant-garde payload that included a water electrolyzer experiment along with a module for algae-based food production. These experiments will yield important insights into sustainable food and water production on the lunar surface. The mission will be powered by Starlink, which establishes a high-speed connection between Earth and the moon base. Unlike the grainy monochrome footage of previous lunar endeavors, we'll now experience stunning high-definition visuals depicting life in the space landscape. That's all for today's episode. See you in the next episode.